I'm going to take a page out of Dan from Guns and Guitars playbook today and uh, work outside. So today we're going to talk about, uh, hang on, coffee. It's a little chilly. We're here in right outside of La Crosse, Wisconsin. Uh, so today we're going to talk about action and setting the neck relief on a guitar when you would want to do it, um, how strings affect that, temperature, humidity, that sort of thing. So let me go get, uh, let me go get the Les Paul, I guess. I guess we have to wait for the poop truck to get done pumping. Well, he's finally gone and now everything smells like poop. So uh, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to put the second set of strings on for our little string test thing. We're doing a little test where Leslie basically just hands me a set of strings with no packaging. I don't know what they are. I put them on the guitar. I'm playing them for five days or so. I'm taking them off. I'm putting on the next ones. I'll give you my impressions now of the first set. Like I said, I don't know what they are. We won't know until the end. The first set of strings was uh, really, really good. Probably some of the best strings that I've ever used. After a week, they sound exactly the same. They feel exactly the same. They don't even have any like, you know how when you play and then you get like dark spots on the strings, like where like the gloss on them kind of goes away and you can kind of see where your favorite place, places to play are, you know, um, none of that. Um, I only had to tune them once the entire week. Like they stayed in tune the entire week, never had a mess with them. I mean, if it wasn't for the test, I would never cut these off of here probably for a while. Um, whatever these are, they will last a long time. They're really good. They sound really good. They feel really good. And one thing I really noticed about them as we start to cut them off is they were slick like fast, like you could actually, they're slippery, you know? Um, but not like, I don't think they're coated. I'm not sure, I don't, I mean, I don't know, but they don't feel coated. Like I don't really, as a rule in the past, haven't liked coated strings, but these feel fast. Uh, they have some kind of slickness to them that is pretty, pretty interesting. So whatever these are, I like them a lot. All right, so as we change strings, we're gonna talk about when we would adjust our action. Uh, 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 no, let's get this right. I'm a stickler about this. We're gonna, first of all, let's get this stop bar tail piece off of here. We're gonna talk about the difference between action and neck relief. Okay, so for those of you that are not familiar, everybody wants to say, I need to adjust the action on my guitar. No, you don't. Neck relief is where the truss rod is adjusted to offset the tension of the strings. Okay, so when our strings are on here, they're pulling this way, which is pulling the neck this way. The truss rod is in there to counteract that action and basically give you a, um, a balance between the tension of the strings going this way and the neck going that way, holding it in the perfect spot so that you have a good playing surface. So your neck relief is actually establishing your playing surface. Your action is different. Your action is over here. Your action is how high or low the set of saddles is, okay? This is action. This is neck relief. Now, one of the things that we talk about in some of our classes, like in our Patreon classes, if you have a guitar and you've had it in storage for, you haven't played, let's say you haven't played it for three weeks or a month and you get it out and it doesn't play the way you want it to play. Something's changed. A lot of people will reach for a screwdriver and adjust the, the height of their bridge. Do not do that. The only thing, this is just logic, if it takes a tool to move it and you haven't moved it, 
then this hasn't moved, okay? The only measurement on your guitar when it comes to all of this stuff, um, whether it be your nut, your saddles, um, your neck relief, um, anything, the only thing that has moved without you touching it is the neck relief, the truss rod. Why is that? Uh, the biggest thing is gonna be humidity. So how you store your guitar is really important to that. It's difficult for me, obviously. I live in a motorhome, and so if I'm in Arizona, the air is drier. If I li uh, live in, um, let's see, oh, for, okay, for example, uh, we were in Wyoming, South Dakota for the last two weeks. Now I'm gonna be in Wisconsin and Michigan for the next two weeks. Uh, the humidity is gonna be much higher here. It already is. It was foggy here this morning. The humidity is much higher. So um, it's possible that with humidity, so the way humidity works, because wood is cellular, um, it, it enters the cells of the wood and it expands them. So if you have a guitar where um, the action changes a lot, it's because, probably because the humidity has come up. Now, a lot of people will say temperature also, but temperature does, has a whole lot less effect than humidity does. Um, temperature is important when it comes to glue seams, uh, making sure your binding doesn't pop off. Um, it also, you know, if your finish is gonna crack, that sort of stuff, that's temperature. But when we're talking about the expansion and contraction of the wood itself, most of that, now temperature does play a little bit, but the percentage is a lot smaller. Mostly, it, we're gonna be talking about humidity. So if you can keep your guitar relatively between, um, you know, 45 and 55, 50 to 60% humidity and keep that right in there um, without it varying a lot outside of there, chances are you will never have to adjust your truss rod because that guitar will be perfectly playable all the time. Now the other time you're gonna adjust your truss rod is when uh, you change gauges of strings. We get this question a lot uh, in our, you know, in our various videos and stuff. Um, if I change from nines to tens, am I gonna have to adjust my truss rod? If I change from tens to elevens, you know, whatever. Um, if I change brands of strings. So it's interesting that even a brand of a string, so these are tens and these are tens, but when I put these on, it's possible that these strings may need me to adjust the truss rod just a little bit. It's possible uh, because the tension might be just a little bit different. Typically within the brand of string, uh, or I apologize, within the gauge of string, typically you don't have to change uh, the truss rod adjustment. However, sometimes I've, I've seen it happen. I have definitely seen it happen. Now, what if we want to change gauges of string? There's where we get a little more uh, interesting because gauges of string is actually going to be pulling on the guitar at a different pressure. Remember we said that the truss rod offsets the pressure of the strings pulling this way. So how much difference in string tension is there between say nines and tens? Um, as a rule, and it's not really a rule, but if you look at string tension charts from various brands, as a rule, you're looking at about 10 pounds of pressure exerted more on the guitar from here to here. Um, on a 24.75 scale guitar like a Les Paul, uh, when you switch from nines to tens. So you're gonna go from like 92 pounds of pressure being exerted to let's say like 103 or 104 pounds exerted, okay? When we go from tens to 11s, um, then we're gonna go let's say 20 pounds. It's gonna be some, somewhere around 20 pounds. It's not linear, it's like an exponential thing. Um, when we go from 11s to 12s, it could go as much as almost 30 pounds of pressure exerted. So think about that. You could be going from, if you went from uh, 10s to 12s, you could be going from 
110 pounds of pressure to 140 pounds of pressure exerted. You know, that's a lot. And so when it's pulling this way, um, when we change the guitar, you know, 20 pounds like that, nines to tens, are you gonna feel it? It depends on the guitar and the stability of the guitar. It depends how good the guitar is. If it is an inexpensive guitar uh, with very cheap materials um, and you know the neck is not super stable, then nines to tens, yeah, you're gonna definitely feel that. Are you gonna feel nines to tens different on this Les, uh, Epiphone Les Paul? Probably not. Um, you're probably gonna be just fine. If you went from nines to 11s, are you gonna feel that? Maybe, because you're looking at almost 30 pounds of pressure exerted difference there, you know, uh, between the two. So what that means is you're gonna go this way, the neck relief is gonna come up, and you're gonna have to tighten your truss rod to tighten your truss rod about probably a quarter of a turn to offset the additional pressure that the strings are putting on the guitar. A little side note to this, uh, I wanna do a whole video about guitar storage, but um, <laughs> I get this comment, these comments all the time. So one of um, the brands who has sent us stuff for a guitar video in the past is Zither Guitar. Zither Music, they send us those stands where you can actually hang the guitar from it. And I get these, I get these people all the time and they're like, yeah, well, if you use that, you're gonna exert too much pressure on the neck and it's gonna stretch the neck or it's gonna twist the neck or whatever and it's not good to hang your guitar uh, because, you know, you're gonna put too much pressure on the neck, blah, blah, blah. That is a bunch of bull -oni. Why? Because how much does a guitar weigh? Guitar weighs what? A heavy Les Paul weighs 14 pounds, right? Something-ish, something like that? Well, if just string tension can affect the guitar up to 30 pounds, uh, the guitar can take it, dude, totally. The guitar can totally take it. It is completely, a, it's a complete, it's baloney that a guitar cannot take being hung on a normal stand. Now, do you wanna twist the peg head every time you put it in there? No, you wanna be careful, obviously. The only thing that I would caution you about storing your guitar out like that is gonna be um, make sure that your room is stable, you, you know, humidity-wise and stuff. But other than that, that guitar is gonna be just fine hanging for example, on that zither stand. We'll leave a link to them in the description. Um, they're not sponsoring this video, nothing like that. I just really like them. In fact, I have an extra one. When I get back to Georgia, I can't do it right now, but when I get back to Georgia, we're probably gonna give one away. Um, speaking of that, so as I finish stringing up this guitar, I wanna talk about a couple of things, a little some housekeeping things. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and play this guitar with these new strings. Like, I don't know what they are. Um, what we're going to do is in the sample of the video, we're going to put the clip from last week right next to the clip of this week. And then of course, when we do it next week, well then we'll have three. That way you can constantly be hearing the different strings right next to each other. Uh, one of the things I want to do is we just had part two of our guitar wiring class over on Patreon, um, on Sunday and it was so fun. And what that's gonna evolve into, I'm gonna tell you right now what it's gonna evolve into, is where we do a little educational stuff for, you know, half hour or so. And then what has started happening is that the people that um, are patrons and are part of that thing are literally um, bringing projects and we're all, and I'm, I'm helping him. Like we, we, we drew up a wiring diagram for, for, for Dylan, a guy named Dylan too, um, who needed help with a wiring diagram. So we just drew it up on the screen and then he could like screenshot that and use it. Um, and uh, Larry has a, a project that he's working on that he brought. And so we were able to troubleshoot some stuff for him and talk about how to, to wire up a, an ES-335 a little bit easier and not have to deal with problems with that. So that is gonna be really fun. And I think that's where 
that live class once a month is going to turn into where I'm hoping that more and more people are going to bring their projects and we're going to be able to work together on them, which is really, really fun. Even though it's virtual, it's still super fun. And then the other thing is I know everybody can't make it right. And so that other uh, $10 patron deal where we're given, where we're doing this thing where we, we give you the recording a month later of that live class, people, we have a lot of people actually. There's actually more people that do that than actually do the live one. Um, and they're really finding value in it. Um, so that's really, really cool. And then, um, and, and honestly, all together, I just wanted to say um, that I really appreciate everybody over there. Um, these are all the people that are patrons this week. Thanks so much. Um, and then the other thing is Friday, this Friday, September 4th, I got a special video coming out. Um, I did not, I never usually plan to do a video on Friday. However, we're going to this week because it's going to be kind of cool. Um, special kind of deal. All right, I tell you what, we got the strings on the guitar. Let's go inside where it's a little warmer. And um, I'm gonna stretch them, tune it, and then we are gonna go in there and get the Kemper and give you a sound sample. All right, so there it is, uh, set number two. A couple things I want to mention about this test. Um, uh, first of all, um, we are somewhere around 44,000 subscribers or something as I make this video. When we hit 50, I'm going to give away two guitars this time. I've got two already uh, to give away. And so the faster we can get to 50,000, the faster I can give away two guitars at the same time. They're going to be modified. They're going to be cool. And uh, yeah, so one of them is that Les Paul that I'm playing. So um, what, a couple of notes about this test is one, I am not making any changes to the guitar. So even like with our video that we, you know, with our stuff that we've been talking about today about neck relief and string tension changes, I've been taking note of the string tension and the neck relief of each set. Um, if I feel like it's changed it a lot, I'll let you know, but it hasn't so far. Um, it's been pretty consistent between the two sets that I've tried so far. I've not adjusted pickup height. I've not adjusted anything. I wanted to put a new set of Dylan pickups DAFs in this guitar. Um, and we will probably do that before we, well, we will do that before we give it away. But I wanted to wait until after this test was over to change pickups because I want everything to be 100%. So pickup height, action, uh, neck relief, none of that stuff is getting changed. So I'm trying to stay as like consistent as possible with this whole test. So that's what we're doing. 
um, and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, make sure you check out our cool video coming out on Friday, which is what I'm going to work on now as soon as I get done with this one and get it uploaded. And then uh, we've got a lot of other cool stuff coming too. And again, thanks to everybody over on Patreon who's been hanging out with us over there. It's been super fun. And uh, I'm going to continue to thank you because that's pretty killer. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, I guess we'll see you Thursday on our live Q&A.